Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode number 11, titled How I Arrived into the Real Estate Business. Don't forget to meet the Fisher Realtors team. You can meet the team at jfisherrealtors.com and subscribe. So all of these episodes will come directly to you. And please, please leave your comments and ask all of your questions. Now this is a continuation of episode number 10. You may remember that it was Mr. Leroy Smith. He was the builder and the owner of the apartment complex there on South 16th Street. And he had accepted our application. And now it's time to shop for furniture. And I tell you, there were many furniture stores located in the downtown and uptown Richmond. And we were looking for good furniture. We wanted furniture that would last us for a few years. And we were looking for uh, uh, solid woods, not veneer, but solid woods. And we had choices of ash wood, birch, cherry, uh, maple, uh, mahogany, and also black walnut. And we decided upon a very, very fine black walnut. And now we are ready to uh, move because this furniture I must mention was purchased at the Martin uh, Furniture Company located there on McDonald Avenue. Now everything is set. The wedding date is set. And the barber business is growing. As a matter of fact, I had facial specials every Tuesday. And on Wednesday and Thursday mornings, I had set aside specials for the preachers and the church family. John Stewart, who was the owner of the Rose Manor uh, funeral service, then it was located on the corner of Fifth and Nevin. He had agreed to donate his fleet of white limo Cadillacs. All the Cadillacs in addition to two limos. And now it's time to get married. We got married at the Providence Missionary Baptist Church. April the 5th, 1964. Now we are ready to move into our, our new apartment there at 512 South 16th Street. Sherman Workman, the architect, and his wife, B, they would live downstairs below us. We were in apartment number four upstairs. And Sherman, he would train anybody in his family who had the desire to become an architect. And one who really took up the trade was his brother, Jesse, Jesse Workman. As a matter of fact, Jesse, he ended up working in the planning department in the city of, of Richmond, as I think he actually retired. In the, uh, from the dep uh, planning department in the city of Richmond. And right across the hall uh, from us was Bob Jones and his wife, Geneva, and their baby boy, Mark. Bob Jones, he was the founder of Turbo Tom's Hoghead Cheese. It was located on the corner of 4th and Ohio Avenue. Now at this time we had decided decided to start our, to not to start our family for a few years. 
this was in order for us to be able to get a better established. And in addition to reading uh, about children in the Bible, and also how my parents had raised uh, me and my two brothers and my sister, I started reading books on how to uh, raise uh, children. And the book that stands out in my mind right today was a book that was written by A.S. Uh, Hill. And it was written in 1960. And the title of the book was A Radical Approach to Child Rear. And I'm going to tell you, it was very radical. I mean, that was the start, I think, of time out. You've heard of that, time out, uh, no real discipline, eliminate all of the spanking. And, and so that was a radical, very radical approach to raising children. At the same time, I was becoming, I had become radical myself because I was reading books written by uh, Richard Wright native son, Uncle Tom's children, and black boy, and also the book written by James Baldwin, The Fire Next Time. And I know how the cage, I know why the cage birds sing. And that was written by Maya Angelou, an autobiography of Malcolm X and W.E. Du Bois. So, I was becoming radical myself. And this book, it left a real impression on me and my character all at the same time. In the barbershop, the customers there the consisted of Black Panthers and, and Black Muslims. And this had happened with, uh, years before with the dominoes and when the Black Awareness and the Panther Party uh, came into existence, that's when I just started the business. It was very difficult because some of the dominoes had, were Panthers, some were Muslim, and I had remained a uh, Christian. And when we would have disputes in the barbershop, we would go back to our domino days and we would lock the door and put someone out in the front and we would start yoking with each other. It was all in fun, and we would keep everything going. So it was a great time, but I, even though I remained a Christian, I had an issue with Christianity, which really dated back to when I was attending Lincoln School, when I was sharing in those days when all of the white boys would call me a nigger and everything. And it was at that time that uh, I had a, a special time every day when they would show uh, a Jesus and, and, and we would have time for prayer. And, and, and you can just imagine when the, uh, the white Americans would seem and look at uh, what Jesus looked like. He looked more like them then he looked like me. So I had an issue uh, that, that led me to have my first uh, debate with my father, who I loved dearly and I highly respected. And that issue was uh, related to uh, the book of Revelations in the first chapter in verses 14 and 15. Now, keep in mind, like I mentioned, I saw this early, but I was only in the sixth grade. But now I'm more conscious, I'm more black. And when you would read that, and, and, it's, and, and it says there that his head and hair was white like snow. It didn't say his face. It said his head and his hair was white as snow and that his hair was like wool. Now, my debate was really with my father. And when you would read that, I, my, my thoughts, at, even at that time, was, look, 
he looked more like us, me and my father, with the description in the Bible, then he's looking like the Jesus that my father had up on the wall at our home. He said that it didn't make a difference. We had that debate and finally we even talked with the pastor of the church. And so I got to the point where I didn't really agree, but I did compromise. Because what they would say, they didn't uh, 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 dispute that the Bible description of Jesus looked more like us than the picture up on the wall because the picture up on the wall had Jesus uh, white, they had Jesus with blonde hair and had Jesus with blue eyes. And I've said then and I say now that uh, 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 white people were smart enough to put him in his, their own image, even though they knew the truth, but we would have to do the same thing. So I compromised, I comp compromised to the point that okay, if it doesn't make a difference, he and the pastor both agreed that it didn't make a difference. So I compromised with that. But I did say this. If it doesn't make a difference, then let's put him in our image. So if you would uh, uh, take the white Jesus, blonde hair, blue eyes down, and put the Jesus that describes him in the book of Revelation in the first chapter, verses 14 and 15, I would be happy with that. Well, actually, you may want to think that actually I lost the debate. And the reason I say that is because my father, my dear beloved father, he never took the picture down at our home that looked like us, that looked like the Jesus, never took him down. And the preacher, the pastor, never took him down in the church. So all I could do, I left the church. I was disgruntled, I was sad, and I was spiritually lost. And I tell you, even though I had left the church, my father, he still remained my number two supporter behind my mother, who was my number one supporter. But I want you to continue. It may, don't leave this on a sad note, because that was then. That was way back in the 60s. Now we're gonna travel on and, and, and this will be another major change. So you got to be with me on episode number 12. And also I wanna tell you, you notice I mentioned facials again. Keani Rochelle's hair design will start doing facials. So keep in mind to keep the skin, men and you women, Call Keani Rochelle's and make an appointment to do a facial. I'm looking forward to being with you on episode number 12, which you will see another major change. I want to thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing you on the next one.